Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with green no bean hummus. That's right, we are making this very exciting hummus alternative with one of the least exciting vegetables ever. And we did that by using a trick that pretty much only chefs know. And just so everybody's clear, we're not making this because it's low-cal or keto-friendly or for most people easier to digest. No, the real reason we're making this is because it tastes really, really good. And this truly is one of my all-time favorite dips. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping our zucchini. And what I'll do first is go ahead and cut this in quarters. And because this one is so big, after quartering, I'm going to go ahead and trim out the seeds. Oh, and pro tip, trim the ends of your zucchini before you quarter it. So you can do that once instead of four times. But anyway, if you're using a big old zucchini like this, what we'll need to do is slice down to trim out those seeds because those are kind of fibrous and don't really have any flavor. And the flavor they do have is kind of bitter. So if your zucchini look like this, that's definitely something you're going to want to do first. And then once we do have those quartered and seeded and possibly trimmed, we'll go ahead and cut them up into about one and a half inch pieces or at least something close. And by the way, if you're using standard zucchini from the grocery store, they're generally much smaller and younger than this. And you probably won't need to take out any seeds. And you could just skip to this part where you're cutting them into chunks. And then once we have those cut up, we'll go ahead and transfer those into a bowl. And in case you're keeping score at home, I cut up three. And then what we'll do is go ahead and sprinkle over two tablespoons of kosher salt. And then we'll toss it with that zucchini very thoroughly. And I know that looks like an insane amount of salt, but don't worry, we're gonna rinse most of it off. And it's this chef's secret that's going to take care of the three major complaints about zucchini. And that is it's watery, a little bit bitter, and pretty much tasteless. But if we toss it with salt like this, and then let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes, that's going to pull a whole bunch of moisture out of the zucchini, which will make it less watery, remove the bitterness, and concentrate those sweet natural flavors. And you don't have to, but about halfway through, I do like to give it another toss, and while this is pretty much done every single time zucchini is used in a restaurant, if that is the chef is any good, this is almost never done in the home kitchen, which really is a shame since it makes such a huge difference. So I let mine sit about 15 minutes, tossing it once halfway through. And right here you're going to get a great look at just how much liquid has been pulled out. And once that's been accomplished, what we'll do is grab a strainer and we will rinse that zucchini really well and then we'll let it drain really well at which point we can transfer that into a bowl and then we'll drizzle over a couple tablespoons of olive oil and then we'll toss that until it's evenly coated. And that's it. Once our zucchini has been lubricated, we can transfer that onto a foil lined baking sheet and we'll arrange those pieces as close as we can together while still keeping them in a single layer. And the reason we want everything kind of nice and tight together is because once we're done, we're going to pop these under the broiler for about five or six minutes or until they're lightly charred and hopefully look like this. And then what we'll do is give these a toss and then rearrange them into that nice tight single layer again. And while we're tossing, if some of the brown spots facing up end up facing down even better, that way the other side can get a little bit of color as well. So we'll pop these back under the broiler for another five or six minutes or until they're just barely tender but not soft, which is exactly what I accomplished here. And then what we'll do is grab our strainer again and we'll go ahead and transfer our broiled zucchini in or grilled zucchini as they call it in England. And then what we'll do is give those a little press and we will simply let those sit there and drain until they've cooled down all the way to room temp. So I let mine sit there for about 45 minutes while I was doing some other stuff. And you're probably not going to get too much, but you will notice some more liquid has drained out. And then what we'll do at this point is transfer that into a blender or a container like this if we're going to use a stick blender and we will add the rest of our ingredients. And since we're trying to call this a hummus, that will definitely include some tahini, which as you probably know is basically a sesame seed butter. And then we are definitely also going to need some raw garlic. And I'm going to go with about three cloves. But everything in here is to taste. And then besides tahini and garlic, the other critical hummus ingredient would be some freshly squeezed lemon juice. And again, this is to taste. So I usually start with a half and then go from there. 
And then I'm also going to toss in some freshly sliced basil leaves, since that is such a perfect herb with zucchini. And then we will season this up with some salt, as well as some ground cumin, some freshly ground black pepper, a few shakes of cayenne, of course, since that's good for the blood pressure and the libido. And that's it. We'll finish up with a little bit of olive oil, at which point we can blend this as smooth as we want. And I have no way of knowing how smooth you want yours, but I'm going to try to get mine pretty smooth and fairly hummus-like in texture. And yes, you can definitely get it smoother in a regular blender, but I am partial to this immersion blender. And as you can see, as long as you blend it for a couple minutes, we can get this relatively smooth. And right here, I determined I'd reached the texture I was going for. So I went ahead and cleaned that off and then gave it a quick taste just to see if it maybe needed more salt or possibly another squeeze of lemon. But I'm happy to report I thought it was perfect, which means it's ready to wrap and pop in the fridge until it's thoroughly chilled. Okay, you could serve this right away, but it's just not going to be as good. All right, I think the taste and texture are better cold. So I went ahead and popped that in the fridge for a few hours, at which point I transferred some into a serving bowl surrounded by some blue potato chips. I know, pita bread would have been a more classic choice, but man, I really love potato chips, blue or otherwise. And then before we garnish, I like to take a spoon and do sort of a decorative swirl on the top, just to make that surface a little more visually interesting and create some dramatic shadows. And once that was swirled, I drizzled over a little bit of olive oil before finishing up with some chopped pistachios, since they are green and pair perfectly with everything else in this. But if you wanted, you could use some fresh herb or whatever else you want. I mean, you are after all the Teddy Demas of what you think will please us. So as usual, please customize this as you see fit. And that's it, I grabbed a chip and dug in. And that, my friends, truly is shockingly delicious. And the reason it's a shock is because when I say the word delicious, nobody, and I mean nobody, thinks of zucchini. But by using that salting technique and then roasting it under the broiler, we've eliminated all the things people don't like about zucchini and ended up with something super savory with a gorgeous earthy sweetness that marries perfectly with everything else we put in here. And no, it doesn't taste exactly like hummus, but I really do think it's close enough. Okay, it does have a similar flavor profile, but in a much, much lighter delivery system, which on a hot summer day might be exactly what you're in the mood for especially if those hot summer days include any long car trips, if you know what I'm saying. But as I mentioned in the intro, we are not making this because it's more artsy and less fartsy. We are making this because it's a profoundly delicious dip that even the biggest zucchini haters will have to admit is awesome. Which reminds me, if you do have some zucchini haters coming to the party, don't even tell them this has zucchini in it. Okay, let them eat about half a bowl first, and then tell them. And trust me, they will be shocked and amazed and impressed and possibly annoyed, but mostly impressed. And I should mention, culinarily speaking, this is probably closer to a baba ganoush than a hummus. So if you were going to make that and wanted to take a break from the eggplant, you could certainly follow this recipe and call it zucchini baba ganoush. But anyway, I went with green no bean hummus because I know there's a lot of people that love hummus. But unfortunately, the garbanzo beans in hummus do not love them. But no matter what you call this, it's very easy to make, very nutritious, and as I've already mentioned about five times, incredibly delicious. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.